Here we're going to go over the Oogie reaction, um, which is a four component uh, reaction. To make this, um, let's choose a different color, just highlight this. To make this amino acid derivative, okay, and I've just highlighted that in blue there, there's amino acid there. So we've got a carol center, and we can choose which R group there we want to have which are group on the nitrogen and so on and so on. It's a fantastic reaction for making amino acid derivatives. Okay, so I just scroll down a little bit. Well, actually, let's explain it a bit. We take an aldehyde with a primary amine with an isonitrile and a carboxylic acid. You basically throw all of them together in some solvent, say methanol or something like that, and then out pops this. It's, it's actually an amazing reaction, all governed by um, kinetics and thermodynamics. So, just have a quick look. So we've got the aldehyde, the amine, isonitrile, and carboxylic acid. So how the how we go about doing this? Um, here we go. Let's have a look. So we take let's change the colour. Take our aldehyde. One and take our amine. I'm going to write the amine back to front just because it helps me. Okay, I'm going to put the lone pairs on the nitrogen and I'm going to just attack that so it's slightly acidic. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I just have a little bit of acid in solution there. Now you're thinking, if it's acidic, why is it? Why is that not protonated? And that is, um, it's actually in neutral conditions. But I'm picking up a proton. Uh, but I'll use the, I'll draw the mechanism as an acidic process. Okay. So we'll be picking up protons. Leaving it's all buffered. Protons are going everywhere. Okay, so we've got R1 now, OH, I'll leave that proton in just for now, just to make sure everyone's aware of what I'm doing, put that proton on there, R2, plus, so we've got the proton here, so we have to deal with our charge, just lose the proton back into solution there it goes R1 OH I won't draw that proton in just for now R2 H okay I'm going to draw another proton this is just for mechanistic purposes Basically, it just says there are protons out there. And I'm going to use the lone pairs of electrons on oxygen to pick up that proton. So we've now got OH2 there, plus NR2. So it's all charged, all positively charged. Draw the electrons on the lone pair of the nitrogen, and then that just pushes that in there and pushes that out there like that. So water was an excellent leaving group, it, especially if we choose methanol because it'll hydrogen, hydrogen bond with methanol, so it'd be nice and relaxed in there. R1. Now I've got a double bond here with nitrogen, R2, H, plus. Now at this stage we won't worry about whether it's E or Z. Um, it's probably going to be in this configuration, so we don't need to worry about that at this stage. It's just a mechanism we're concerned about, and you'll see why in a, a second. We we'll lose that proton back to give us our first intermediate. 
are warm. Oops, doing it in red, but change colour. I'll leave that arrow in red. Doesn't really make much difference, does it? Oh, two. Okay, so a neutral species, we've got our protons back, this protons back in solution there. Or a better way of drawing that would be to um, just actually write that in equilibrium because we're gonna we are actually gonna need to protonate it again anyway, so oops, excuse me. It's all going wrong today. Equilibrium. And to be fair, all of these are in equilibrium. They're not arrows like this, so equilibrium arrows for the Yogi reaction. It's all going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Um water could very easily come back and attack here and form this. Unfortunately, the the driving force is to move it forward through here to better lower energy species. Um, so there might be an equilibrium, but the the favour to go in this direction. So now we've got the isonitrile. Now we haven't just added the isonitrile. I'll just scroll this up a little bit. Isonitrile has been in solution all along, but it's just not reacted to anything. So we'll draw the isonitrile now. R three. N C minus draw all that red. So that then reacts here with this species. Actually I'll just delete that. Just get rid of that. It then reacts with this. form this. So let's try and get this right now. So if I draw R1 here, single bond now, nitrogen protonated R2. I'll put the C in simply so we can draw the triple bond, make it easier for everyone to see. Nitrogen R three but the nitrogen is still charged okay that's where our carboxylic acid comes in so draw that over here and that then attacks draw the lone pairs on oxygen and that then attacks that carbon like that sort that charge out on nitrogen give this species here. It's all getting a bit clumsy now but hopefully you'll see in a minute it all comes together. It's quite amazing actually. N H R2. This is actually our chiral centre here which we formed in this step here. Okay so where are we? Oh yeah. Oxygen should have drawn that the other way around really but hopefully you can understand what I'm doing. I'll put that hydrogen on there just to show that that's where it came from. So there's still charge on there. We've now lost that um, triple bond and turned it into a, a double bond. All three there. Now what I'll do, I will just show you that we we'll lose the proton back but then I'm going to keep this structure rather than draw it out again. So I lose that proton and gain the charge. What I'm going to do is cheat and just delete that because that's what we've done effectively in get oops, draw that back in. Put my oxygen back in. Right, here comes the clever part now because what happens now is we get a rearrangement. So these here go in here like this. This goes up and back down, kicks this out like that. It looks a bit strange at the moment. 
I'll just scroll this down a little bit. So we've got this here, and this attack here and breaking of this bond. Hopefully, in my other tutorials, I've explained that it goes through a tetrahedral intermediate, then breaks down and breaks this bond. So these double-headed arrows will be quite clear if you followed my other tutorials. So that gives this species here nitrogen double bond, oxygen. Uh, I'm going to protonate that because I didn't protonate it. So if that, imagine that was protonated. So that's protonated there. Okay. So this cyclizes because this gets protonated. This proton, this oxygen get protonated and this nitrogen get protonated too. But when it's in this state where this oxygen is protonated, it'll undergo cyclization like this. Draw R1 like that. Nitrogen R2. H, this is going to be protonated now. So that's got that amide functionality there, R4. Now, this, if you've done the uh, enol keto enol tautomerism stuff, you recognize that. So that tautomerizes, picks up another proton in solution, H, plus, and that should give you R three N H draw that H on there carbonyl which just formed R one nitrogen R two proton on there as well and another carbonyl there for the amide and that is the Yogi reaction. So the main thing to think about here with the Yogi reaction is this cyclization. It can get a little bit tricky, um, but it does give this product via this by this mechanism. And it does give this product, and it's an incredibly efficient reaction. Four components all going together, uh, so you don't need, you basically leave them all in solution to react together and out pops your amino acid derivative. Absolutely phenomenal reaction. So that is the Ugi reaction.